What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Angel R. Talk, with the NYCTalking.com podcast. It has been a while since I talked to you guys. The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. <laughs> Let's talk about something that I recently tried to do, right? So I know someone who has a firearm in their house, and the firearm was legal where they used to uh, reside. And once they move to their new location, it's no longer legal. There's rules about this stuff, right? You can't take a gun from, say, uh, Wisconsin, get on a train with that gun, come to New York City and have the gun in New York. It's, it's considered illegal. It's, it's, it, it can get you locked up for a long time. So it's not a good thing. I was looking at a way to help them get rid of it through legal means or some way that they won't get in trouble. And one of the things that we have in New York City, New Jersey, and probably some of the other states is something called a gun buyback program. So the um, police department will set up a date and time where they'll collect the guns, no questions asked. You just bring it, give it to them, and they dispose of the firearms, whether they're handguns, pistols, shotguns, whatever, rifles, whatever you got. They take them and get them off the street. That's the whole idea. Get them off the street. And they give you like 200 bucks. Not a lot of money, but it's something considering that you'd probably get nothing for it otherwise and potentially could get jailed for it or locked up in prison for it. So I say it's a win-win situation for everybody. So this is the second or third time that I have called a gun buyback program for different reasons. Um, all three times I have been unsuccessful in finding a program, when they're going to do it, getting details if it's still active, getting anything useful from the number that I called or the people that I emailed. It, it's, it's weird to me that they say, we want to get the guns off the street. And then when we reach out to them, like, hey, there's a firearm that I know of. I want to help this person get rid of it. Oh, I don't know when the next program is. I don't know when, where it is. I don't know. There's one that had a listing and it said uh, February 10th or whatever, right? It said that this is the date of the, the, the event. No year on it. I don't know if this is an old event, a present event. So I called them up and I'm talking to someone and they talking to someone and we're bouncing around and no, no one can give me an answer. No one can tell me when, where, how, or even if it's accurate. It is mind-blowing. They want to get the guns off the street, or at least so they say, right? But when we approach them to try to get those guns off the street, in my case, I called three different times, two different states, trying to help someone dispose of a firearm legally so that, you know, they don't get in trouble. Um, they didn't know the laws. They're not clear on things. So I try to help them out. And I couldn't get no joy out of it. I got no success. So I think that's a problem. I think that um, in New York City and, and New Jersey and, and any other state that has a program like this, the, the mayors, the governors, the council, the city council, the, all these representatives need to get together, um, the police departments, and they all need to come up with a plan to consistently run the program. doesn't do any good if you do it once every six years. What's the point? By the time you, 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 you get the next batch, there's a whole other batch out there. This makes no sense. This program should be happening. In my opinion, you can, you can uh, bring a couple officers two times a year, every six months, have, a, I don't know, six cops there collecting the firearms and then disposing of them. I, I think this should be easy to do, and it should be something that's consistently, regularly done, and it is not. And in my opinion, this is a problem, especially when they're always saying, we want to get the guns off the street. doesn't make sense to me. just doesn't make sense. And, and for gun owners, if they want to get rid of their firearms, they shouldn't make it so difficult. Legal gun owners, mind you. I'm talking about people who, like, have guns. I have some friends who, who own firearms and they were trying to get rid of them. They make it very difficult for you to get rid of them. It's, it's, it shouldn't be the case. You know, you should be able to, Go. I, 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 honestly, 
it should be a, a 365 days a year, 24 seven operation that you can bring a firearm and, and bring it to the fu- police department. You should just be able to go give them the firearm in a box, locked, whatever, and just get rid of it. No questions asked. That should be available to us all the time. I think it would be a very useful thing to have. And frankly, I'm surprised that the way they do it is these buyback events where they're randomly done whenever these people feel like doing it at churches or, you know, a community center, bring them all there. And, and when I ask, when is it happening? Oh, I don't know. We don't know when's the next one. Call us again. Try in six months. The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. <laughs> On the topic of firearms and guns, I was having a little heart to heart with some of my friends today. And not that long ago with another friend of mine, we were talking about like the insecurities that men have about penises. You know, is it big enough? Is it thick enough? Is it strong enough? Does it satisfy her? You know, like men don't like to talk about this stuff and they generally won't admit to it or talk to it. But I think that the majority of men have some insecurity when it comes to their man tool, myself included. We're not beyond this, right? (laughs) I'm not above this. So we were talking about it and I was thinking about a couple of stories I read and one in particular, and uh, mind you, I didn't heavily fact check it. But I, I read a story about a, a billionaire, apparently, who tried to get a penis enlargement. And as I understand it, again, I didn't fact check this. And I don't remember the guy's name. This was a very long time ago. The guy died, allegedly. Let's, let's work off of the premise that he did. Um, whether or not it's true, again, I haven't fact checked this. I have actual friends who have died doing cosmetic surgery. I have a, a very close family friend who lost her life doing um, a Brazilian butt lift and a tummy tuck. Horrible, wonderful, wonderful woman, lifelong friend. And she had worked so hard to lose weight and get in shape. And I guess she wasn't completely satisfied with her progress. She went and did this and unfortunately, She's no longer with us. We miss her. She was a great woman and it sucks. So all that being said, I, I qualify penis enlargement as cosmetic surgery. It's in that realm of, of surgeries, right? Because unless you have like a really invisible, tiny micro penis where your penis is not functional or there's some real, real problem. Like in that case, I can, I can understand somebody risking their life, you know, because if, if you can't enjoy sex, right. If you can't have sex, if you can't, if you can't perform sexually and you can't enjoy yourself because of, something like that. I, I kind of understand you going to those desperate measures, right? But let's take someone like myself. I am not what you would call well endowed, right? I don't have a huge freaking penis, you know? Um, it's not a micro penis, right? It's not like a tiny invisible penis, but in terms as of, of huge penises, you know, like you see in the pornos or Whatever people talking about, I got the eight inch. That, that, yeah, I'm not, I'm not packing the eight inch meat. Now, if you asked me, you know, if you could, would you, you know, would you want to have a, a larger penis? Was, Hell yeah. I, I, I don't know too many people that wouldn't. Hell yeah, I would. It's the same as if you asked me if I would want to be a little bit taller. Sure. But both of those items, I can't do nothing about. I can't make myself taller. And I'll be damned if I'm going to wear those shoes that you see posted on Instagram talking about, put these shoes on, it'll give you an extra six inches in height. That is, to me, that's worst. Can you imagine going out and meeting someone 
and they're under the impression that you're this tall because you got on those shoes that make you a little taller. How humiliating it is to me as a man to put on those things to make me look taller and try to pick someone up. And then when they come out, they see that you're not that person. To me, that's humiliating. I would rather walk the world at five foot seven and have everybody see that I'm five foot seven and this is it. If you're a woman that is five foot eight and you would never be interested in a guy that's five foot seven, let's establish that right from the gate. I'd never want to have to have been in a situation when I was dating and meeting people that I would have falsified my height with these fake shoes attract the woman and then turns out I'm not that height. That to me would be humiliating. And especially if she dumps you for it, bro. No, no. Be who you are. And here's the thing. I know if it makes you feel good, you, if it makes you feel good to put on those giant shoes, I support you 100%. And I encourage you to do it. I'm speaking for myself. Angel, me, myself, if I was wearing those things and I got this girl and now we're in the house and I take those things off and all of a sudden she's like this to me and she realizes that I misled her, that to me, me, this is me applying to Angel. To me, that would be embarrassing. If you're feeling good and you're comfortable with that and you don't care and you, you know, you, it makes you a happier person to wear them, do it. I'm not crapping on anybody or why anybody does. I'm speaking strictly for myself. I would be embarrassed. And that's just me. I'd rather just you know what I am, who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this is it. You like it? Great. You don't? That's cool, too. So that's, that's when it comes to with height, right? And the same applies to your penis. Let's say you go and you have surgery to make your penis a little bigger. I don't know how much bigger you can make it, but I don't know. Let's say you get an inch out of it. Great. So you got a bit more of a penis length or whatever. But is it worth the risk, though? Let's just say you don't die, which is the worst case scenario, right? You die or whatever. That's the worst case scenario. Then the lesser scenarios would be one. uh, Maybe you can't get an erection properly. Because something goes wrong, you can't get an erection. That would suck, right? If, if you're physically and mentally and, and hormonally able to, but you break something down there because you're messing around, that would suck. What about if you lose feeling? Dude, the whole point of the, the penis is feeling, right? You're having sex, you're feeling it, you're feeling good, and you give each other pleasure. Well, what if messing around, trying to make your penis a little bit bigger, you disrupt some of the nerves that give you the pleasure and the feeling, and now you don't feel anything from sex. That would suck even worse, right? You got a bigger penis for who is it for? Who is it for? So when you're in the locker room, the boys see this massive thing dangling down. You're trying to impress them. Why do you care about them? Is it to, to impress the girls or whatever? Well, now it can't get hard. Is that impressive? You can't get an erection. You get her. She's impressed. You get hard. You start having sex. You don't feel anything. You don't get any pleasure out of it. And that sucks, man. I wouldn't take that risk for a little bit more of a pride or ego. There's certain things you can't change and you got to accept them. And to me, that's not worth the risk. I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. If I could safely and magically make myself taller, make my penis bigger, make my feet straight, make my neck not hurt. If I can do all these things, I would do it, but I can't. So I have to accept what it is. I am an average penis holder, an APH on the best of days. And I I feel pleasure when I have sex. My partners throughout my life have felt pleasure when we have sex. Everybody's happy. You're good. Why mess around with that? Why mess around with it over ego and pride? Is it worth it? No way. Not, not. No way. What are your thoughts? The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx.
Have you guys seen this new trend of people filming other people at the gym and trying to make them appear as creeps? Now, don't get me wrong. I know for sure that there are creeps at the gym. I had a girl come to me on Wednesday and say, hey, do you mind walking me to the locker room so that somebody sees that I'm not alone? Because I feel uncomfortable. This guy is coming up to me saying he's always been watching me and he would like my name and my number and he wants to be friends. Men hit on women at the gym. It's, it's no secret. It's been happening since I was a kid, probably before then, and probably even worse back then. It happens. You know, you're in a place, you see someone attractive, and you want to talk to them. I, I get that. You're shooting your shot. You're trying to make a friend. You're trying to maybe get them to go out to eat with you or whatever. I get that. You know, the problem is that the world today, it's, it's, a, it's an odd place where it comes to that. I, I wouldn't even know how to approach someone these days if I were out here dating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of feel like you need a good opening, a connection, something you share in common, not just going to the gym and randomly approaching them. That's generally not perceived well by the female, right? So maybe you take a class together. If you take a fitness class together, you're around each other all the time. You see them, and then you can start becoming friendly and go from there and let it organically happen. I don't think that many people would take issue with that or really get offended with that. But when you randomly approach someone, that's usually not well received. And these days with this very sensitive world we live in where everyone's on guard and every, you know, things are gotten a little wilder in terms of perception, right? So if you just glance at someone and they're filming it, they could take that and make it into whatever they want. We've seen it so many times. These people, um, uh, usually females, will record, uh, they'll be recording themselves working out. They'll see someone glance in their direction or ask them a question or just walk by them sometimes slowly and even just glance at them. And they'll say, look at this creep. And they'll blow that out of proportion. It happens too. So you'd be a fool to think that there are not men out there hitting on women at the gym. It, it exists. You would be a fool to think that there aren't creeps. There are creeps. I've had to tell men, yo, chill out. I've gone during my Zumba classes and gone over to men and stopped them trying to record the girls' butts. There are definitely creeps at the gym. And, and I've had more than one confrontation with these cats. You know what I'm saying? They, are, they definitely exist. But a lot of these clips that I've seen, it's not that. And you do a disservice to yourself, you do a disservice to other women, you do a disservice to society by promoting that type of thing if it really isn't a bad thing. And sure, people are going to say it's perception and, and, you know, like you're entitled to feel how you feel. And I get that. I get that. And I struggle with it because I, I get it. I do get it. But you got to use common sense. Right. Let's say we're at the gym and you're doing your workout there. And I just go like this. I look at you I like a quick, uh, quick glance. And then I look away. I think to me and correct me if I'm wrong, that's normal. It happens to me all the time. Somebody will look at me, a girl or whatever. They'll, they'll look at me, they'll glance at me and then they'll look away. Sometimes they'll smile. Sometimes they'll say hi. I'll say hi. Just keep it pushing. These are normal human interactions. They didn't disrespect me. I didn't feel disrespected. I didn't disrespect them. Now, with women, I get it's different. Y'all's experience in the world is different than mine as a male. I get that. And I'm an ally, right? I'm an ally. Like I said, I have walked, I've walked women to their cars from the gym because they asked me because somebody was following them or watching them. They felt threatened, scared. I've had, um, um, Gay men come up to me and ask me to go help them because somebody was being homophobic towards them and, and, and go over and be like, yo, what's going on? You know, and just, you know, respectfully, but have a conversation about what's, why are you bullying this guy, right? I've had, like I told you, girls in my Zumba class come and tell me, can you walk me to the locker room? Hey, Angel, that guy is at the windows making me feel uncomfortable. Can you go tell him to stop watching us? I noticed somebody recording. I run over, yo, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? De give me your phone. Delete that. Stop them. I've been on the train and I see somebody harassing a girl and you could tell she's uncomfortable or a woman. I go over, yo, how you doing, Susie? Look at the guy. Hey, what's up, man? And let him know or make him believe that I know her and I'm her friend and I'm here until he leaves. I've done these things. I am an ally. But we need you, ladies, right, as well as other men, to also be allies, right? When someone's wrong, right, they're wrong. Now, if you're in an emotional space that if you're in public and somebody simply just glances at you and that triggers you, people will always look at you. In the street, they'll look at you. People always look at other people. When people walk by me, I'm always looking. I'm always looking. I'm always looking. It's not because I think everybody's hot and I want to check everybody out. I'm doing a threat assessment. I'm looking at what's happening, what's going on around me, who's around me. Are you too close to me? Am I in danger of hitting you when I move, when I lift the weights, whatever? I'm always observing and, and noticing my surroundings. For me, I, I grew up in the hood. That's a survival instinct. If you're recording yourself and you happen to catch me glancing, and just looking around, you could take that, chop it up, and make it look like I'm, you know, I'm some piece of crap. So we need people like you to be allies to those who are not being creeps. And speak up. You know, um, perception is what it is for people, and I get that. But just because you perceive something doesn't necessarily mean that's what it is. And we should be able to talk about that, and we should be able to support each other. I'm telling you, if I see someone doing something wrong to a lady and I'm around, I will always step in. I will always step in and do what's right. And, and, and it's not because of kudos or whatever. It's just who I am, how I was raised, how I, I, I exist in the world. Understand that, right? But to, to, to try to put us in a world where Someone just glancing over at you and then looking away or even glancing you up and down because you're attractive or whatever. It's human nature to look, to take that and blow it into uh, this thing of like, they're, they're these horrible, disgusting creeps. That's just not right. And we got to do better on that. And I think, you know, I think we, we can do better. We will do better. And it's also on men to chill the hell out. When you go to the gym, unless they approach you, leave those ladies alone. That girl that's in my Zumba class, she doesn't want to talk to you. She's married, bro. She's got her life. She doesn't. Why should she feel scared that she has to come and get me to bring her down there? Because you made her uncomfortable. I, 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 I get it because I struggle with that. Like if you see someone and you, you want to talk to them, you want to say hi to them. I kind of like that's the world I come from. That's how we approach people when I was coming up. So that's the world I come from. Maybe that's the world people think we still live in. So I, I kind of get that. But listen, when you go to the gym, people are just going to work out. Let them work out. Let them do their own thing and leave them alone. If an opportunity presents itself where you can safely and comfortably engage with someone, do it. But if you're out there waiting for them after class and as soon as they come out, you jump on them. Hey, can I talk to you? I'd like to know your name and get your number so we could be friends. More than likely, that's not going to be well received. So all of us, let's try and do better. The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. <laughs> now, speaking about working out, my training has taken a huge hit. You guys know I have um, some injuries that have come over the years. Some wear and tear, some were more acute in nature, and the others, like I said, chronic wear and tear injuries. I have a neck herniation at level C3. And when this thing flares up, the pain is unbearable. It shoots up from here all the way up into my head. And it gives me these horrible headaches. And the pain is just aching. And it's horrible, people. It is so freaking horrible. I, of all the injuries that I've had in my life, this one is the one that I hate the most. I still have a torn shoulder and generally it doesn't hurt too much. It bugs me a little bit, but when I train jujitsu or I spar or I do anything really crazy, it'll start to bug me. Even sometimes in yoga, it can start to hurt me if we hold too many uh, 
too many planks or whatever, you know, too many uh, side planks or anything that puts too much pressure on it, it could start to hurt after a while. But in general, it's okay. You know, this one, the neck one, it's, it's, it's always present at different degrees. And when it really goes up, then it is completely debilitating. I've puked from the pain. I mean, it is really, really horrible. And uh, I hope some way, somehow I can find a solution to this. You know, um, I've been seeing like um, advertisements for stem cells. And I wish that money wasn't an issue so that I can try stem cells to see if that helps. Some of the places I looked at, I actually reached out to them. Twenty-five k, twenty-five thousand dollars to 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 do a session or a round or whatever it is that it's called. Twenty-five k, y'all. That's like that's a car. That's a a an eighth of a mortgage for a home. You know what I mean? Like it's a lot of money, and it's inaccessible to the general public. You know, like your average person can't afford it. Now. These stem cell uh, laboratories and, and offices are generally overseas. So even if I had the money, I'd still want to research more and get more information to determine whether or not it's safe, whether or not these people are safe. I mean, the clinics, they're operating outside of the U.S., so you're going to have some risk you take. It's just the nature of what it is. But the research seems promising. The supporters seem promising. I'm interested in seeing how it evolves. And hopefully one day they get it locked down. It is affordable and accessible to all of us. Because right now it isn't. I can't afford 25K to, to get stem cells put in my neck to try to heal it. I can't afford it. It's too much money. But I will say this. I will say this. If they told me. Angel, 100%, you do this stem cell treatment, and I guarantee you 100% you'll be healed. I would finance it, and I would do it. But I guarantee you they won't do that. Like, if I reach out to them and I say, hey, can you guys with 100%, without a doubt, guarantee that this is going to work before you take my money? Their answer would probably be no. Can I get the money back if it doesn't work? Their answer would probably be no. So with that, it makes me question the effectiveness. If 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 I'm paying you 25k, then it should work. Without a doubt. And you should be able to stand by that guarantee. What do you guys think about stem cells for uh for injuries and stuff? Like what are your thoughts on that? My my jujitsu, I should have probably finished it last year in August. My combative belt and the Gracie system. But particularly because of my neck, I've missed a lot of a lot of classes and I've had long periods of, of layoffs from training because of my neck. When this thing hurts, it's it's just too much. So unfortunately I haven't finished it. I have four stripes on my belt and I've met most of my requirements um in terms of the card goals where they tick off all the, the little little X's on everything you need to do. I had like maybe eight more classes. I'm pretty much done. I could take the test at any time. Unfortunately, because I've been missing so many classes, I feel like I, I can't remember every single technique perfectly. You know, um, but I'm still working on it. I'm still showing up. I'm still doing the work. I still love the sport, but when things go bad, I got to rest. It's just not worth the, the pain. And I'm telling you guys, this pain sucks. Be careful out there working out. Be careful training. Be careful gaming. Even the way we sit when we're gaming, we're like this, you know, with our neck forward like so. It creates pressure here. And I think it's like for every inch. I don't remember the number, but it's like 10 pounds of extra pressure. And if you could tell, if you look at my neck, my neck kind of goes forward when it should be here. Now, I've been doing physical therapy movements for months. And I bought this thing called the Iron Neck. I've been using some products called the Soul Right. I've been trying to do everything I can to help with this thing. It's pretty bad. And when it hurts, it hurts. But, you know, if you're young and you're watching this, you could prevent this. Do corrective exercises. Make sure your posture is good. I've been getting uh, scolded for my posture since I was a kid, always slouching. And I didn't care. I didn't think anything of it, you know. And here we are today. It's probably all connected. I'm positive it's all connected. 
you know, um, unfortunately, the way I grew up, I grew up in the hood. So if I walk like this with my head up, it's easy to get your head shot off. So we try to keep our head down, avoid eye contact, walk with your head down. So in a way, poverty, which keeps me from doing the stem cells to heal this, in a way, poverty contributed to it because it was our culture, our upbringing. The way I came up required me to be like this because if I was like this, I was inviting trouble. So I always walk, keep my head low, below the radar, try to avoid trouble, don't look at nobody, you know, and look. Look at where we end up. The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. <laughs> Before I close out today's episode, I want to give you guys a couple of recommendations. There's a new show we started watching called Lockwood and Company. I think it's called Lockwood and Company. It's kind of like a ghost hunting show. And I don't know anything about it. I never read the books. I don't really know much about it. But just randomly started watching it. And we have been enjoying it. My wife and I have been watching it and enjoying it. And um, I recommend you check it out. So far, I've been enjoying it. It's been a good show. Of course, you know, it could be like one of those scenarios, like another one we watch, Half Bad, right? Half Bad, um, it's been out for a little bit. We watched it. We finished it. We were enjoying it. And they're like, oops, we decided to cancel it. Bro, what the hell? This is, this is the problem I have with series and why I prefer to watch a movie that has an ending, a finality to it. And I say the same about series. The series should conclude before we go on to the next. You shouldn't leave us hanging because there's no guarantee you're going to come back. Like, look at Half Bad. Half Bad was a dope show. Canceled. I picked up the book to try to read the book. I tried, I tried to read the book. I, I couldn't get into the book. The way it read, the way it was written, I couldn't get into it. So I will never know the full story. I'll try the book again. But I just, I was having a hard time getting into it. You know, it doesn't read like a normal book. The way they wrote it is a lot of like third person. It was just weird. And I didn't enjoy reading it, you know. So that that series, I may never know where it concludes, you know, and which is unfortunate because it was good. But they left us hanging. They left us hanging. And you talk about like a series like um, Percy Jackson, Percy Jackson, that movie series. There's supposed to be another movie. They never made it. They left us hanging. Again, I, I want to pick up those books, too. I want to read those books. Um, but you got to finish it because you don't know if you'll ever get a chance to finish it. So I hate when they, you know, it's like a series and it's going to be like maybe a three, three season series and you won't know the full story until all three seasons. I don't enjoy that because we don't know if they'll ever finish it. So I feel like you should cover a portion of the story that has an ending, some finale to it each season. So you don't leave us hanging. And if you happen to not come back, we're not left hanging and, and it's done. We got the story. Because, you know, Half Bad was, was dope and they left it at a dope part with some pretty cool stuff. And we just, that's it, we're left hanging. Does he eat the freaking heart? I don't know. You know why I don't know? Because they didn't renew the show. Is he going to get all, all the powers? I don't know. Because they didn't renew the show. What happened with Percy Jackson? I don't know. Because the movie didn't get renewed. I think there was some talk about putting it on Disney as a series. But what? What? We'll still never know what end happened in the movie. So stop assuming that your shit is so good that it's going to be around. Because it might not be. Give us something to finish and close it out with. And then restart at the next season. You know what I'm saying? Physical 100. Physical 100 is a trip. That show, it's a Korean show um, based on these amazing people with amazing physiques, and they got to do different challenges, and at the end, one person won't be left. It is wild. My wife and I are, like, so excited as we're watching it. Ah, ah, whoa, we get so animated because it's so good, and, and I don't really care for sports, never have, but something like that gets me you know, hyped up and amped up. And I don't know the people. A, a Korean person from 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 that culture that knows the people would probably enjoy it even more because they know all the people. They know who Agent H is, and you know, like like all these people, they know who they are. 
So they're super excited to see their, you know, their pop icons competing. And these people's physiques are amazing, mind-blowing. I enjoy it just as a person who has no clue who any of those people are. I don't know any of them. My wife knew like one or two from YouTube. I don't know any of them. I don't know who Agent H is, but I tell you what, I liked him. I liked his character. I like what he's doing. I like how he looks. I like how he carries himself, his humility. Like, he seems like a dope dude, and I am interested in knowing more about him. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the show is fire. It's really dope. It's basically just like, it's almost like an X Games or, or um, if in Spanish, Exaltón, you know, they're, where they just do physical competitions um, and try to survive. Pretty dope. You should check it out. Finally, Let's talk a little bit about DC. As I understand it, Cavill had announced that he was going to come back his role as Superman. And they even had him like in a little snippet on Black Adam. And I was like, yes, you know, this looks so dope. Then sometime later, he announces that he's been, uh, you know, removed as Superman in the DC universe. Cavill is the perfect, dopest Superman that I've ever seen. And I find it troubling that these people got rid of him or whatever. I don't know exactly what happened, but I think it's not cool. That dude was doing a great job. His films were phenomenal. Man of Steel was such a good movie. And I was so excited to see him continue the role. And then they dropped this stuff. Let me tell you guys something. Your movies are okay. And you're not doing as well as Marvel. And I'll even say that Marvel today isn't as hot as it was during the Infinity Saga. Right? They've dropped the Infinity Saga. The Infinity Saga finished. They haven't awakened in me the excitement that 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 whole episode, that whole series of movies had. That continuation to see where we're going. Right now... I don't know where we're going. I don't even know what the, what, what is this? What are we doing in Marvel right now? What is it? That was the Infinity Saga. What is this? The multiverse or whatever? Like what exactly is going on? Where are we going? I don't know. I don't have that level of excitement, right? I saw Black Panther. That was the last movie that I watched. I enjoyed it. It moved me to tears. I thought it was touching. I think it was beautifully done. Um, I had no idea where they were going to go with it. I didn't know what they were going to do. I didn't research. I wanted to be genuinely surprised when I watched the film. And I think they did as good a a job as they could, given the circumstances. And that being losing their lead actor, this phenomenal man, Chadwick, and and losing him as the Black Panther, I I didn't know where they were going to go. I was kind of hoping that they kept the story the way it was meant to be. and recast him but keep the character you know that's kind of what i was hoping they would do but i wasn't married to that idea you know because i also respect that you know what this guy did this and let's let's keep it him forever i get that you know so what they did i think it was good i think the movie was great i loved it i enjoyed it it moved me deeply it moved my son we were all that just i mean you can hear a pin drop when they were doing their tributes. I mean, it was unbelievable how powerful and heavy the theater felt. Like everybody was just, you know, just moved all at the same time. It was beautiful. But even with that movie, I still don't know what the big picture is. I don't know where we're going. All that is to say, Marvel is still better than y'all. And y'all are messing around. DC, I'm talking to you right now. Y'all are messing around taking out your biggest guy, in my opinion, the most entertaining dude in that role and getting rid of him. It it just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why you're doing it. I don't agree with it. And I don't know where you go. I don't know where you're going. I don't know where you're going. You guys are great in the animated films. You do great work in animated films. I enjoy your movies. But losing Superman, to me, was a bad move. And I believe you're probably going to live to regret it. The city of New York, Boricua from the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for taking this time out of your day to listen 
to the NYC Talking Podcast. If you have any thoughts that you'd like to share, please use the comments, leave a voice message using the Anchor app, however you want to communicate, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm on everything at Angel R Talk. Look forward to hearing from y'all, and I'll see you guys soon on the next episode. If you'd like to be a guest on this podcast, reach out to me on those aforementioned methods. Mention what it is you'd like to talk about or what you'd like to plug or, or promote or whatever, and we'll go from there. Once again, thank you for listening, and I am out. You are listening to the NYC Talking Podcast, www.nyctalking.com. Please like NYC Talking on Facebook. Please follow Angel R. Talk on Twitter and Instagram. We are NYC Talking, the realest lifestyle blog ever. Thanks for listening.